This is Mark Lamia. Hit it! Welcome to Gunshots Straight from the Hip. I'm your host, Mark Gunn. The views expressed on this program are those of the host and guests and not necessarily reflective of anyone or any entity associated with this broadcast. This episode, African Americans and STEM, the not-so-new frontier. Part of what I do as the host and creator of this podcast, I'm also an IT professional, so I know a little bit about working with the internet and computers. Kind of have to these days in order to be a little bit successful. The thing is, as African Americans, we are woefully underrepresented in this field. Ironically, we're overrepresented in social media. In other words, we can use the computers, but we really don't know how they work. For as a matter of fact, the numbers read like this 93% of black students are not STEM majors. STEM science, technology, engineering, and medicine. A very important field that more and more educators are getting kids into at a younger age. As a matter of fact, in this episode, you're going to be hearing from a young man, 13 years old, who uh, is about to launch his own business. And he's been able to do that because of his involvement in STEM. But first, how does a STEM program help students of color in the first place? We wanted to create an environment that kids could start to learn science early and to start to debunk that notion that black and brown children aren't scientists. You know, the the research shows that there are less uh, black and brown folks who go into STEM fields and it really starts early on and it starts with early representation. We really work hard to look at what is the lived experience of our children and how are they already practicing science and practicing scientific thinking that we can support their awareness of that so that that they can see that they're already doing it. When I think of a cultural framework for, for teaching science, I think about habits, thoughts, actions that have been passed down in generations of black families, in Latinx families, in indigenous culture, that is the way that we understand and relate to the world around us. Our hope is that being intentional about a layered approach that brings in educators who are black and brown and unique opportunities for kids to try something to practice that scientific way of thinking early that those different things layered together will create the type of outcomes that we want to see which is a really robust and enriched pipeline of black children who are starting to go into stem fields stem is not a new phenomenon as a matter of fact it's been around for a long long time for some of the earliest examples remember the movie hidden figures Katherine Johnson and her crew, the mathematicians that helped launch the NASA space program? There are a lot more black people involved in STEM than you actually really know about. Some of the names are famous, a lot more aren't. Here are five examples. You get an opportunity to be part of people's lives in a way that's much more intimate uh, than other kinds of professions. I mean, I took care of a number of children over the course of their entire childhood, and I became like part of the family. Dr. Alexa Kennedy was the first African-American woman to become a pediatric neurosurgeon in 1981. She specialized in treating children with spinal problems, brain tumors, and trauma. And all of science, all of space exploration, everything we do in the world is about imagination and using your creativity to expand beyond your normal boundary. Mae Jemison became the first black woman astronaut to board the Endeavour Space Shuttle in 1992. Her achievements led her to an appearance in an episode of Star Trek in 1993. So I worked on their PowerPC platform. I did, I did work in a research lab in Austin, Texas and ran their research lab there and managed the team that built the first gigahertz microprocessor. Mark Dean earned a master's degree in electrical engineering and was recruited from IBM as a chief engineer. At IBM, he co-invented the industry standard architecture systems bus which is a system that allows expansion cards to plug into computers. Afterward, he invented a color PC monitor and led a team to create the first gigahertz chip. 
I guess my network, I knew a lot of minority entrepreneurs, but even then there were no access to resources, capital, of course, and even um, mentors. Angela Benton is a businesswoman who strives to diversify the technology industry to give everyone an equal voice. In 2007, Angela created Black Web 2.0, or now called B20, which is a site for Black people interested in technology. The site merged with a popular news platform called Scoopbyte in 2019. In 2011, she created a platform called New Me, which is a business mentorship program for underrepresented minorities. Through New Me, startups have been able to raise over $47 million in capital funding. She also founded Streamletics, which is a platform that uses data science to provide accurate information on what people are watching on streaming platforms and gives people the ability to own their data. But what keeps me going day in and day out are the personal stories of success that we see in the girls that come to our classes. Kimberly Bryant is an electrical engineer and is the CEO of Black Girls Code. It is an organization that mentors girls of color about technology and computer science. It started as a local organization in the Bay Area and has since expanded internationally. The young girls who have graduated through the programs are now leaders in their communities. Representation in any industry is important because it shows that anyone is capable of being who and what they want. All right, in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the ongoing effort to involve more African-American kids in the field of STEM. That's science, technology, engineering, and medicine. And uh, my guest this this episode is a young man who uh, took an early interest in this type of work, so much so that he excelled in his uh, younger days. At 13 years of age, he is about to do something that uh, very few 13-year-olds uh, are even contemplating on doing at this point. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this young man happens to be my great nephew. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my man, G.J. Dennis. What's going on, young man? Um, I'm good. I'm good. You're good? All right. So let's let's talk yeah. about let's talk about because you know at this at this point being 13, and we'll get into this yeah. a, a little more as we continue to talk. Uh, from what I understand, you took an interest in computers and, and science at a very early age. Talk to us about how uh, how you got turned on to it and and what that whole exploration was like for you. So around about ten uh, nine years old, I started playing Minecraft. Mm -hmm. And before I started playing the game, I would watch YouTube. And I would see uh, people playing with mods. It's basically like a modification of the game mm -hmm. where uh, you add more stuff to it and stuff like that. So I, I got really excited about it. And my auntie, she had an old MacBook that she said I could have. Oh, okay. So my bought me Minecraft on that. And at the time, I didn't know that there were requirements for this stuff. Right. So every was like laggy and all that good stuff so it was just a mess for me playing so i tried to install mods do what the youtubers did at the time mm -hmm. but i couldn't uh i had to look some stuff up and i saw that you needed this that and the thing i don't remember what the requirements were but that's when i first started getting into pcs so i could play minecraft and i still do it to this day and now I can do the stuff that I wanted to do a few years back. But that's when I started watching YouTube videos and trying to figure out how I could do that myself mm -hmm. and make YouTube videos and that stuff and be my like be a Minecraft YouTuber basically. Okay, so basically because you wanted to improve your experience while playing Minecraft uh, you learned how to make those modifications to the game itself uh, to improve your gameplay, right? Yes. Okay, so how did it go from Minecraft to getting deeper into the inner workings of computers and, and, uh, and that whole technology? Um, around 10 years old, I got my first Xbox, and I would play that, right? And 
I wanted to play other games that were PC only. Mm-hmm. And I wanted I wanted my own gaming setup, like full desk, like I have now. A full desk, two monitors, a chair, a mini fridge, <laughs> all the good good stuff and it worked with it. Right. I wanted but by the time I couldn't get it. So that and then that's when I started watching videos on it. I I really started diving into the PC community then, like pre builds versus building it yourself, mm-hmm. uh looking up what parts did, how the parts worked, all that stuff. Okay, so for those that that, that don't that I don't want to make sure I want to make sure that we're not too inside baseball. Pre built computers are those that you can typically buy uh, on the market, self builds are yeah. those that you kind of uh, what I what I call Frankenstein. You take the various computer parts uh, that you want to build to your specifications, and you build the computer uh, from the inside out. So everything from uh, the hard drive to uh, the motherboard, all of the other parts and essentials that you need, and the casing uh, to cover it all, uh, you build yourself. Now. With you watching the YouTube videos and getting all of this, uh, getting all this information, uh, I would think that the cost of building a computer would be somewhat prohibitive, wouldn't it? Yes, uh, mine was about nine hundred twenty dollars, mm-hmm. but at the time, GPU miners started coming around, uh, like people trying to make Bitcoin because the Bitcoin was, was high at that time. Right, right. Like like fifty, sixty thousand dollars So it, potentially it was big money if you knew what you were doing mm-hmm. in the market. So people started buying, at the time a, 30, a GTX, no, RTX 3090 came out. That was the main thing that people That was the main thing that people wanted to build, like build their mining rigs with. Okay. Uh, another name for a PC. And so you were able to, at some point, finance uh, the building of your $900 PC, which uh, on average, and we're not talking very long ago when you did this, uh, the average PC these days, a desktop model, can run you anywhere from a thousand to fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars, if not more, depending on what it is that you're doing. Uh, and we're talking about just for the average user, but you are what we classify as a super user. So your requirements uh, would be a little different from the average person's, correct? Yes. Okay. So my PC is. Mm-hmm. My PC is just a. A base PC, honestly. I um, at the time I looked up a YouTube video to see what parts I needed for this PC. Mm-hmm. I got the, and then I built the PC. Now from build- uh, when you yeah, go ahead. When you do, I'm, it's pretty easy. Mm-hmm. Like like some bumps in the road, but when you get the hang of it, plugging everything in. Putting the CPU and GPU, which are computer parts that run the main system, the two most important parts, I would say, other than the storage and RAM. Right, right. It's so basically how you know how fast the computer operates and how much can you store in it uh, would be the, the the two most important components if we wanted to. Just break this down into 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 layman's terms. Now, w- once again, we're talking with G.J. Dennis, who is a 13-year-old, my grandnephew, uh, who has excelled in STEM, that science, technology, and engineering and medicine uh, is the field. And let's talk about this evolution of yours, because a lot of this work you started uh, you started getting into uh, what it would be, what it would be uh, more advanced. Uh, types of classes at school, and how did that come about, and, and where has it led you to at this point? Uh, so my mom, well, me and my mom decided that I would get homeschooled this year okay. because I didn't want, online didn't work for me at the end of seventh grade. Right. It didn't. I I couldn't learn that way. So at the end of the year, which was about a month ago, mm-hmm. I. My final tests, and I scored post high school and wow. a, uh, tenth grade and above. 
on most of my scores. I think it was only one of my scores that it was middle school still. Mm -hmm. And you're, so that, yeah, go that's ahead. how I got that to go into the advanced classes and graduate early. And you're about to start your freshman year, your freshman year in high school, correct? Yes. Now, what? Now, have you decided which classes, uh, any advanced classes, or anything else that you're going to be taking, or uh, is that still a path that you're still trying to explore? One that I've been obsessed with since I love history. I've been obsessed with AP history because I know I can, I know I can get the extra credits for it, mm -hmm. so I have enough credit. Wait. And I'll actually like doing the class and challenging myself to history because history was one of the ones I scored after high school. On. Oh, okay. Okay. And so um, now are you going, are you going to school? Are you homeschooling again or, or how's that going to work out? I'm going to school. Okay. So let's talk about, uh, pretty much what what it was like for you uh, during your your early exploration into all of this because you know I, I know and you'll probably run into this or then again maybe you won't because I think kids are, are built a little differently these days um, in the old days somebody with your kind of intelligence would have been looked down on as a nerd but what I'm also seeing is that um, more kids with your intelligence, uh, they're not as rare as they used to be. So I, I would imagine that the circle of folks that you hung out with, did they pretty much have the same type of interests, or uh, were you pretty much uh, on an island when it came to that stuff? Uh, we all like gaming. It's just I think I was the only person that uh, wanted to build a PC. I know one of my friends are interested in building one now, mm -hmm. but I think at the time I was – and looking up all this stuff. Now I'm sure I'm by those people. Like my um, one of my closest friends, I've known him for about I think we're going on three years now. Mm -hmm. uh, he lives across the street from my grandma. He plays all the games I play and all that stuff. So the interest. And, is, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, and then another one of my friends, I think we're going on three years as well. Um, he has his own PC, and he he got me into PC gaming, like, seriously. Mm -hmm. Now, do you see any other uh, applications for the for the knowledge that you've you've picked up on your own and and have practically applied when it comes to building your own PC? Uh, would this be would gaming be a specific area that you would want to target or? Uh, are, are there other areas of computer science that you uh, that you're kind of getting into? Um, right now, I am. I was thinking about learning coding, like going into it seriously, mm -hmm. like using Windows programs like HTML, JavaScript, JSON, right. stuff like that, just to pick up another thing. Mm -hmm. Since I have my own PC now, and if I really wanted to, I could get serious about it. That's something that that, that you can kind of wait on, I would think. Yes. Okay, because yeah, there's a there's a lot of money in coding, and that's that's something that I don't think a lot of people realize. Coding pretty much is the language that your uh, that your computer speaks in order to execute the types of commands that uh, that you want it to do. Back in the day. Uh, we would use this program called DOS, and it was basically a series of zeros and ones that you would have to write in code in order to do the most basic things like uh, get your computer monitor to, to just say hi. You would work on this code for maybe hours, and it would be pages long, and um, your results would come out on the old dot matrix printers. You'll have to Google this stuff because I know it's... <laughs> it's... it's, it's I was a kid when a lot of that stuff came out. So um, let's fast forward uh, because of your interest in building PCs and your interest in gaming. Uh, it was recently revealed that you are about to start your own, uh, your own business. Yes. Okay. Tell us about that. What's, uh, what's the name of it? And, and how did you come to that decision to start the business? So the name is brotherboard. 
And when I built my PC, it was my mom's idea to start it. Mm -hmm. And I said, why not? I know, like, you can you can get a good amount of money out of it. Right. Like, especially now because the market is up. After my, after my mom suggested it, I was just all for it. Like, stay, I was all for, like, getting this thing going, like a, a train and, like, people laying tracks on it and the train going mm -hmm. as the tracks were laying. I was trying to get everything done, and now that everything is done, or most of the things are done, mm -hmm. we're, we're about to launch, and I'm really excited for it. So what will be the general the general purpose, and what kind of services does uh, Wood Brother Board uh, actually offer? PC troubleshooting, PC repair, and PC building. I was also thinking about making keyboards for people because I know mechanical keyboards, mm -hmm. a lot of people like them, especially in the gaming community. Right. I have two. I have two now, and I was thinking of building them uh, as I, as my YouTube. I've been watching a lot of videos on it, mm -hmm. but that's another thing I'm thinking about. Oh wow! So with uh, with the computer services that you that you're offering, um, and I'm also hearing a a custom PC component uh, into the business as well. Uh. A custom PC building, like if somebody needs something like an office PC, a a PC to build a PC to build like a PC to make music or right, uh, right. anything to do. Right. For for instance, the the setup that I have is specifically designed, or I specifically designed it uh, for audio and video production. In fact, that's what we're using right now uh, to execute this episode. So, if I were to come to you and say, GJ, I need, um, you know, I, I need a little more bang for the uh, that I'm getting out of my uh, out of my laptop. I want to be able to do this, this, and this. Um, with the memory that I have or with uh, the memory that you could probably expand for me. Uh, Cause I, I've, I'm old school. I had a, um, a laptop, a Toshiba laptop that I had for like 10 years and I just Frankensteined it. Every time I needed a new component, I would just buy it and, you know, replace what I, you know, just replace what I needed. Nothing to the degree of what you're doing, but if at some point I wanted to, uh, you know, to get the ultimate Frankenstein audio video uh, PC for my studio, you would be somebody that I would come to in order to have that built, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. If you wanted me to, I would. Uh, the process for me is I look up, I research what the PC requirements are, mm -hmm. and I go. Requirements. I make you your own parts list. I make sure that it's in a reasonable price. I also I would also refer you to anything such as like in your case since you're on a podcast like some sound equipment mm -hmm. like some of the newest sound equipment that you could also buy with it. Um, just stuff like that. Your PC itself, if you did want one, it would. The shipping is a bit iffy because uh, I use a site called Newegg. It's basically like the yes. Am it's like the Amazon of computers, for right? Text. Very yeah, very familiar with Newegg. Very familiar with Newegg. So let's talk about because again, at the beginning of uh, of this podcast, I was uh, I talked about the importance of uh, of African American kids getting into this type of field because. One, we are so underrepresented in it, uh, even though, and two, the digital divide uh, with us is so, so real. Um, we are overrepresented on social media, but underrepresented when it comes to computer science. Uh, are you finding that a lot more of your friends are, are interested in this field, or uh, if you had to, to talk to uh, the average 13 or 14 year old that may be listening, uh, how would you 
talk to them or how what would you say to them about uh, about your experience with computers, uh, what you're getting out of it, what you like about it, and why it's something they should probably look into? Um, to be honest, it's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. When I first built my PC, I was ecstatic. I was jumping. There were a few problems, of course, uh, with the RAM, but I was still, like, very excited. I was excited when I powered it on. I was excited when I got my GPU and I put it into my motherboard. Mm-hmm. The whole press process was excited. Um, some reasons to get into it is, I mean, it's just another hobby, really. Mm-hmm. It's it's really fun to do. And you can play with your friends, or if they need a PC, you can you have the experience where the parents can send you the money, and you can build them a PC for their birthday, Christmas, or any holiday, really. Yeah, there you go, there you go. And then with uh, with Brotherboard, now when when are we anticipating uh, the official launch of Brotherboard? Uh, probably in the next three months. Maybe. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, probably in that. And uh, are so are you? Uh, do you have social media sites or anything like that up and rolling? Or right now, I have an Instagram page. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a job form where you can submit an inquiry. And right now, you can order a PC if you want to. It's just not the whole business isn't up and running it but of course if you if you want to order a pc you you can go to my job form uh enter all the information that's listed there that's needed and i'll call you uh i'll talk to you for a bit i'll see what you need Uh, of course like i said earlier i'll put your parts list together i'll make sure that it's in your price range and then we'll go from there all right, so if, one, if people wanted to get more information about Brotherboard, uh, where can they go? Uh, you, you mentioned Instagram. What's the Instagram, and what are your other social media sites? Uh, right now, I only have Instagram, but the Instagram is, let me pull it up, brother, brother underscore board dot LLC. Okay, that's brother underscore board dot LLC on the Instagram. And, again, the business yes. is expected to launch within the next – Three months, you said? Yes, sir. Okay, so you can uh, actually check GJ's out, uh, Instagram out, get more information about the company. Brotherboard is the company. Again, it's being launched by a young man who's only 13 and uh, has proven to be wise beyond his years uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to STEM, and again, I'm always a, a big, big proponent of uh, young people getting into this uh, this technology because, uh, as I said before. We're overrepresented in social media, but we're underrepresented in this field. So we need more GJs uh, <laughs> doing this kind of stuff. And trust and believe, nephew, uh, once you get everything up and running, I will be uh, consulting you for some of your services. Because, like I said, with, with everything we have going on here, um, you know, I, I want to deal with somebody that knows what they're doing. And you know can can get me what I need when I need it, okay? Cool, cool. I got you. All right. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, that is GJ Dennis, the uh, president, CEO, and soon to be owner of Brotherboard LLC. Man, thank you so much for for spending a little bit of time with me. I mean, I, I am so proud of you. Uh, for you know, not only just excelling in this field at such a young age, but already knowing what it is that you want to do, and and going for it. Thank you, thank you. All right, and so uh, so I will be uh, in touch with you and your mom, and uh, once you get the, the business started, let me know, and uh, Mark on Media can help you out in that regard as well. Okay. Once again, that was G.J. Dennis of uh, Norfolk, Virginia, who is going to be starting his own business called Brother Board LLC. STEM is so important for our kids to get involved in. There's so much information that you can get online from it. I strongly encourage you, if you've got young kids, have them explore this. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did. You've been listening to Gunshots Straight from the Hip. The views expressed are those of the host and guests and not reflective of any business entity or anyone associated with this broadcast. If you have any comments or want more information on how to be a sponsor, log on to our website at markgunmedia.com or call us at 502 502- 
507-0283. That's 502-407-0283. Thank you for listening. Mark and Mia, no hype, no hoopla, just damn good work.